Hi everyone, now that we have our works cited page done, we've set up the MLA format for Times New Roman, doubles, um, double, um, double line spacing and all that good stuff, indenting. How do we put in what we call in-text citations? Meaning, how do I tell my teacher or my professor where I found this these quotes or where I found this data and which of these quotes belong to which of the articles? So here I have my paper so far in looking good in, in good order. And you'll notice that I do have, um, excuse me, that I do have, oops, some quotes. So for example, you'll see I have a direct quote here in my opening paragraph. So in the 1960s, Americans who knew, blah, 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 blah. So I open it up with quotations and I end it with quotations. So now how do I tell my teacher where I have that? So it's a direct quote. So where did I get it? So remember, we use the in-text, we use the um, citation tools. So you're going to go back to tools open up citations and open those up. Because remember though, once you do them, they will not go away. So on the right hand side, I have the two articles that I had to use the add source citation to. Um, I'm just gonna scroll down to my work cited. So you'll see that I have the Hendrickens, Hendrickens, Hendrickens there and I'm the Pride Month where there, but I also have one here, number two, that I got from the database. And remember, um, I can just copy and paste that from the article into my work cited. So I do have three articles, but only two I had to do some work for to um, get them in MLA format. So the quote that I had in the upper first paragraph, where does that go to? So let's use these tools to add those in. So the very first quote that I have in my opening paragraph, so here it is in quotations in the 1960s, blah, 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 blah. And I close the quotations at the end with a period. Now I want to attribute that one to my first article. Well, actually it was a book, this one here called Hendrickson. That was the author's last name. Now the computer knows that it was a book because in citation source information, I told it was a book. I told the computer it was, so it knows. So right here, I'm going to click this cite button, which is so great, right? So at the end of my quotation here in my paper, I want to put that in-text citation right next to the quote. So I'm going to put my cursor right after the the, the um, parentheses, uh, the quotations close, and I'm going to click on to the right, my cite tool. Now notice it put in the author's last name for me in parentheses, and it's even telling me, all right, Mrs. Curran, this was a book. So what page did you find that quote on? So if it's a book, I do have to put a page number. The databases, I do not. And the websites, I do not. So it's even easier. So right here, Hendrickson, I'm going to put that it was on page 11. And then the parentheses close and the period goes at the end. That's it. That's in-text citation. That's it. Let's try another one. So in my paragraph number two, I have, again, if you can see down here in quotations, in 1964, Congress passed public law, blah, 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 it keeps going, and it ends at the word origin and close down the quotations. So I'm going to click here with my cursor. Now this one came from the article that I found on a website. Um, I want to attribute this quote directly to that article, the, that um, website that I use. So. Here's my cursor right after the direct quote that I'm putting in, and I'm going to go over to the right to my citation tools and click cite. Now notice what it did. We did not have an author's last name. So in that case, when we don't have an author's last name, it puts in the title of the article. And notice it put the parentheses, it put the quotations around the title of the article, it closed the parentheses, and there's a period at the end. That is all done. So that's my second in-text citation. I'm telling my teacher that I did these two direct quotes and there, this is where I found them, okay? Now for the third one, remember I don't have it over here on the right because I just copied this citation directly from the one of the databases that we use. So that one, how do I do that? Well, no problem. Just go down, since it's not listed on the right here on this side, I used this article called Parenting for um, one of my direct quotes. So in that case, all I have to do is to copy the very first line up to the period, actually to the end of the quotations. So it's Parenting, parent, 
parenting. I can't talk today. I'm so sorry. I'm just going to copy that first part. All I need is the title of the article or the author's last name. That's it. So I'm going to copy that. And now I have another quote that I want to put it next to right here. Um, when I have this one, separate but equal was, um, I'm going to do here, the civil rights. I need to show my teacher that this came here. All right, so there's my quotes. And now I'm just going to paste in that in-text citation. But now it's not as good as the tools, right? So I all I have to do is go and put the parentheses around it. Parentheses and, excuse me, a period. So it was called parenting. And that's what it looks like right there. I'm just going to do one space. So parentheses and a period. So if you're doing it yourself in the in-text citation, if it's not listed over here on the right-hand side, all you're going to do again is to take either the author's last name or the title, whatever is listed first, copy that, go up to where you're going to put that. So at the end of the line, you can paste it in, but it has to be surrounded by a parentheses here. Okay, has to have um, parentheses and a period at the end. Okay, so that's my third one. All right. Another way to give credit to information that you found from one of your citations is to use the author or the title of the article in the sentence. And then you won't have to put the um, citation at the end because it's already built into the sentence. And that, by that I mean, um, I could say, according to the article in quotations, because it's the name of the article, Pride Month 2024. Okay, just as you see on the right side or on your work cited, um, I can say the Sybil Rights Movement was a turbulent time. So in that in that case, I am attributing that I found this sentence, I found this this quotation or I paraphrase this quotation from that article and I'm giving credit to it. So I'm not saying that I made this up myself. I thought of this on my own. I, I attribute it to that article. So that will avoid you having to put an insect to, in, in text citation at the end of the line. So you can vary it. You can put the in uh, text citation information at the end of the sentence if you want to, direct quote, no problem. Or if it's not a direct quote, you're just paraphrasing, you can do the same thing. Okay, to vary it for the reader, though, you could also put where you found it in the sentence, and there's no reason, no need to put it at the end of the sentence. The only time I would have to do that is if it was a book, and say, for example, if this came from um, Kenneth Hendrickson right here, I know this one is a book because it says it. Um, so if I said according to the author, Hendrickson, the civil rights movement was a turbulent time. So if it was a direct quote from him, I can put the page number. So say it was in parentheses, page five, and the period at the end. So it's always parentheses, period at the end. Okay. Even though your sentence ends here, you're going to put your parentheses at the very, very end. So parentheses, period, parentheses, period, and then you are off.